people place different kind of prayer in different categories. I'm Tim Greenwood, and this is Windows on the Word. Some like to break topics up into fine powder. Personally, I like to boil everything down to its basic components. Therefore, these are my prayer categories. First of all, we have praise and thanksgiving. This kind of prayer should be making up the bulk or the main body of, of our prayers because these are the prayers of faith. Praise and thanksgiving is how to use the shield of faith. That's the shield of good faith and how to stand in good faith from the signing of a contract or an agreement or a covenant or a relationship to its full fulfillment. Praising and thanking God is how we can reassure God that we are continuing our faith stand and that we continue to fulfill our part of that contractual relationship with God. This is important because even though we know that God's word is good, he's not too sure about our word. Now, the second kind of prayer is supplication. Supplication is basically making requests or asking something. The Bible says that we have not because we ask not. Now, the way my dad used to put it was, if you don't ask, the answer is always going to be no. So you've got to ask. Supplication is just another word for petition. Now, petition is taking the legal form of a request before the king or a ruler, which for us is taking our petitions before our King Jesus. There's personal petitions or group or corporate petitions. Now, the Bible tells us that we should boldly and confidently take our petitions before the throne of our king because if he's already through the Bible, already offered us what we're petitioning for, then we should already know two things. Number one, that he'll grant us audience to hear what our, we have to say and what we have to ask in our petition. And two, that what we're petitioning for is already as good as ours. God's answer when it comes to requesting or entering into any promise, contract, agreement, covenant, relationship offered in the Bible is always yes and amen. Next is confession. There's two types of confession. Now, number two, confession of any sin or breach and the acknowledgement that we missed the mark and that we're repentant for breaching any contract, agreement, covenant, or relationship. Now, note that in any breach of contractual relationship, repentance, at least in the form of the acknowledgement of the breach, is normally required before any grace clause can be applied to allow that contractual relationship to move forward. Now, this kind of prayer also goes by several other names, such as consecration, uh, sanctification, and other names that all denote some type of voluntary commitment. Now, the next type of prayer is worship and fellowship. You see, worship and everyday fellowship is just establishing, maintaining, and developing positive relationships. The word fellowship simply denotes being with or spending quality time with somebody. See, when God and I fellowship, we just walk and talk because Father God is my daddy and Jesus is my big brother. See, but Father God's also my God and Jesus is also my king and my high priest. Therefore, I also be sure to honor and respect their office as well. Now, the word worship refers primarily to showing the respect and honor and giving credit to whom credit is due. For example, the Bible plainly says that by his stripes, his bruises, those whelps, those places of torn flesh all over his body, you are healed. You see, this is a promise. This is a legally binding good faith offer made by God to you. It's an offer that becomes a legally binding good faith contract or covenant or agreement upon you becoming party to it by signing the contract. 
which forms a new good faith relationship between you and Father God, which needs to be developed and maintained. Now, if you simply take God, Father God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit at His word based upon this contract, then healing already belongs to you, and you have given Him and His word full credit. But on the other hand, if you have disbelief or even doubts concerning this offer and require Jesus to completely heal you up front before you'll even trust His word, then you're not giving Him any credit or His word any credit at all. Now the relationship that God is seeking with man is one in which both parties can freely give each other full credit and each other's word full credit. Now the next type of prayer is intercession. Now this intercession is simply an intervention to reconcile two or more parties and occasionally it can be included in a group petition. As the key to the plan of salvation, Jesus intervened as an intercessor to reconcile the breach of contracts between God and mankind. Now using the analogy of Ezekiel 22:30, Jesus or God came as a human man to stand in the gap or the breach on behalf of mankind to reconcile the contractual relationships between God and mankind. Ezekiel 22:30 says that to regain the possession of the land, I searched for a man among its inhabitants that would rebuild the wall and repair the breaches for me so that I wouldn't be forced to give up the land and demolish the rest of the wall. But I found none. Now that scripture talks about a wall or a hedge or an enclosure which actually refers to the voluntary legal commitment which encapsulates that contract and self-binds each and every parties of that contract. So the wall is the agreed to contract and God's desire to make every effort, no matter what the cost, to reconcile and repair that breach in that contract so that the contract won't have to be scrapped or dissolved. Now in this case, in that scripture, the analogy is referring to the repairing of a contract deed for that land. Failure to repair this breach would forfeit the land. Now that, that phrase, stand in the gap, really isn't the best translation for this scripture and should read like repair the breach. Now the intercession that we're talking about here could range from the intervening between members of your family to the reconciliation of conflicts between nations around the world depending on the extent of your spiritual authority. So then, learn to effectively utilize your entire prayer toolkit. Praise, thanksgiving, supplication, confession, worship, fellowship, and intercession.